You're on. Okay. You, you went live, though, on um, both things are shooting the map oil feature. You didn't change out to the uh, to the VK page. Anyway, we can do it from there. Did I do this? I thought I said your page. Yeah, you did. Uh, you didn't change it. But anyway, we're okay. Oh, I thought uh, oh, Lord, we thank you for loving us, for dying to set us free. We thank you that you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lead us, guide us, fill us again with your spirit, and we give you thanks. We give you thanks. We give you thanks. We give you thanks. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. So, uh, welcome with us. We're in the... Uh, the, the Hello. We're in the book of Revelation. We're in the 17th chapter, really... Uh, I'm uh, getting feedback here. Okay, and so, uh, so some some harsh passages here, and some amazing passages, and some difficult passages, and we'll uh, we'll take them on as they come up. Right. Yeah. Revelation uh, uh, seventeen. Uh, this is all about Babylon. This is kind of a, um, in a sense, I'll, I'm taking taking it from within the context of all the chapters. It's kind of a, a sidestep, or it's a, a, a chapter of greater detail on the particular destruction of uh, Babylon, uh, and also uh, more of an insight as to what ba uh, mystery Babylon actually is. Um, John was surprised, uh, literally shocked, to see this woman sitting on his beast in the wilderness. Uh, final verse in uh, uh, ver uh, chapter 17, verse 6, final words are, he stared at her in complete amazement. Surprised because um, it was one thing to expect uh, the secular kingdoms to oppress people, but uh, here... Uh, she's actually the harlot religious systems, some of which put on a, a Christian facade. And uh, he's surprised to see this uh, religious figure really represented as a harlot, totally unfaithful spiritually, uh, not loyal, um, uh, full of compromises of all kinds, especially, well, sexual is brought out uh, prominently. Uh, but again, this is in, in a spiritual sense. Um, she is just a, a, a surprise to him and uh, says so in, in verse 6. So we're picking up in verse 7. Why are you so amazed, the angel asked. This is the angel and John, of course, asking John, why the amazement? I will tell you the mystery of this woman and of the beast with seven heads and ten horns on which she sits. Now remember the seven-headed, ten-horned beast goes all the way back to Daniel chapter 7 and has already come up a, a few times in Revelation here. So um, the difference in this uh, scenario is that the, the woman riding the beast uh, gives the impression that she is supported by the beast, the beast being the Antichrist System, the Antichrist and his system, and his governmental system support this um, idolatrous woman, uh, this uh, this harlot, uh, the way she's referred to. Um, so, background on that, verse eight: uh, the beast you saw was once alive. Okay, so talking about a past kingdom, but isn't now. So it's a dead kingdom, past and dead. Uh, and yet he will soon come up out of the bottomless pit and go into eternal destruction. Uh, so uh, he's going to come alive again for a short while, come back from hell, raise hell, and then go, to, go back to hell uh, permanently. And the people who belong to this world, whose names were not written in the book of life, before the world was made, will be amazed at the reappearance of this beast who has died. Okay? Interesting that uh, the people who belong to this world, whose names were not written in the book of life, before the, before the world was made, 
the book of life, there was a book of life, and there were people not listed in it, which implies there were people also listed in it. So those that were listed, and those are not. It's interesting because when you go back, I'm, I'm, I've been working on this this uh, this uh, notion uh, that um, uh, we should take Jesus more literally when he talks to the. Uh, the scribes and Pharisees that have opposed him, he refers to them as the seed of Satan. The seed of Satan. It's like a, an entirely different root of origin. And it starts all the way back in Genesis, I think Genesis 3, with the, uh, well, we have the serpent in Genesis, of course, talking to Eve. Um, and uh, it, it, I'm trying to trace down uh, is there a delineation from the start of the seed of Adam, okay, who's a creation of God, and the seed of Satan, which would be the offspring? Of course, God created Satan too, but he didn't create him evil. But the seed of Satan, obviously bad seed, uh, going forward, are, they, uh, is there a, uh, are there people walking among us? Yes. I think I'm, I'm speaking a little quickly here, but people that uh, derive from that lineage, uh, as well as those that derive from the uh, seed of Adam. Well, and I think, in one sense, all who sin and fall short of the glory of God, none are righteous, no, not one. So that when Adam and Eve gave over the world to, uh, to the devil, um, you know, but now... But now in Revelation, we're finding out that there is uh, choices that are being made, and people choose to have their name written in the Book of Life, or they choose not to. Um, and those those who choose to follow the Antichrist are um, are in deep trouble here, mm. and and in, in the time to come too. Yep. So, um, so. So that's how, yeah, this, this is the point. Yeah, we have to drill down on this stuff. And these are mammoth studies on their own. So <laughs> we're trying to give you the, the overview of these chapters. Which is, and, uh, and, you know, that's the focus here is uh, Revelation 17. Anyway, yeah, you were saying, I'm sorry. Well, and to think about that a little more, the, um, the commentators commonly think about the Roman Empire being re these leaders coming out of the former Roman Empire. Um, and then obviously the Roman Empire went away for a while, individual states, individual nations, and um, and to come back into prominence uh, under riding the authority of the uh, anti-Christian religion and religions around the world from Babylon or whatever. And then you think, okay, so the Roman Empire is not an empire now. It's a number of, of countries. So when people try and think, okay, it'll be these guys. But remember, the Roman Empire ran from, from the uh, um, Atlantic Ocean to yeah. way, out, way, yeah. way out to Turkey. I mean, to, that, to, that's yeah. how big the Roman Empire was. Right. So to see... Uh, countries and beasts and stuff come out of that. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's not localized it's just to Western. Right. Yeah, the eastern know. eastern border was considered the Euphrates River, which we talked about uh, and right. we'll visit again. Uh, so yeah, you can go far east as well. That's a very, very important point because the, the traditional or the classic um, do doctrine or instruction on these passages uh, assumes uh, the western leg of the Roman Empire uh, that uh, literally, uh, 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 by its own internal con uh, corruption, fell, uh, really just fell apart. Uh, it was never really conquered from without, whereas uh, the other kings mentioned in the book, the uh, Babylonians and the Medo-Persians and the Greeks and so forth, were, were all conquered. Uh, and the, the Roman Empire uh, morphed into what is uh, referred to as the Holy Roman Empire, uh, and uh, so that's. But, but the and, and the traditions that follow from that 
are often uh, backed up by the imagery here. But the eastern leg actually meets some of the criteria even better. Um, can't get into it here because it's just too too involved, um, and it takes us away from the chapter. But um, okay. Anyway, so let's talk. Let's talk about the end. This uh, this verse eight. So now we've seen the world decimated. We've seen people with hearts that are incredibly hardened toward God Almighty, and all of a sudden this miraculous being shows up, and and they're amazed. Um, so if you're if you're uh, if you're not in love with Jesus and the biblical Jesus, then then it is easy to understand how you can be amazed at the works of the of this of the satanic antichrist and prophet therein. So they're 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 like, whoa, okay, we don't love Jesus, but look at this, look what's happening. And so and that takes us down to nine. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah. They, they, uh, the beast you saw was, but isn't now, and will soon come alive again. Down to nine. This calls for mind with understanding. The seven heads of the beast represent the seven hills where the woman rules. Okay. Uh, again, uh, idiomatically, uh, the hills, the horns, these are seats of power, seats of government. Um, and to say she rules, I mean, she is on top of the beast, after all. So she is above the beast as a, f a false religious system, uh, system awfully loosely amalgamated, actually. Again, all of the, the non-biblical uh, religions of the world, including those that look like Christianity on the surface, if they're not really following the, the, uh, the tenets of the, of the word, um, are deviant. And in their deviance, they, they um, uh, pro uh, corrupt people. Uh, but uh, to continue on here, the seven heads and beasts represent seven hills with Roman rules. They also represent seven kings. Five of the kings have already fallen, the sixth now reigns, and the seventh is yet to come, but his reign will be brief. Okay, again, now, if you want to go back in history and, and trace this through the various ancient kingdoms from Egypt to Syria to uh, Babylonia to, uh, I'm, uh, I jumped ahead there. Uh, yeah, no, Babylonian and the Medo-Persians and the Greeks and the Romans and so forth. You can, you can follow that through. Um, uh, but we will uh, say no more than that. At this point, verse 11, uh, the scarlet beast that was but is, uh, is, no, is no longer, is the eighth king. And he is like the other seven, uh, and he too is headed for destruction. Okay, the scarlet beast, that's the current beast. Uh, and that could be interpreted a couple of ways. This, this is the Antichrist. Uh, right. uh, but this is John writing in present tense in John's day, of course, the, the, the uh, rule, rule was Rome. But John writing in present tense has also been transported into the into the tribulation period. So I'm not sure if he's talking about his 90 AD present tense. I'm pretty sure he's talking about his tribulation present tense. I mean, he's actually been transported into the tribulation era. Yeah. So when yeah. he's looking up, it's like, oh, this is today. And uh, good morning. Welcome. Hi. So the Scarlet Beast is no longer, and is now the eighth king, like the seven, headed also for destruction. And the ten horns of the beast are the ten kings who have not yet risen to power. So when anybody tells you that they know who the who the horns are in Revelation, they don't understand verse twelve. Verse twelve says they're not yet in power. Um, they haven't yet risen to power. So uh, be really careful about saying that this country or that country is one of the one of the kingdoms talked about here or there because the, the, everything's in flux. There's a, there is a new world order coming in. 
there's uh, power plays going on in, in the tribulation period between these kingdoms. And uh, so really don't get caught up in thinking that you know what you're thinking because they aren't in power yet. They haven't yet risen to power. And you think, well, that's distracting because I was certain it was this king or this kingdom or that kingdom or whatever. But the scriptures here tell us you can't know yet because they haven't risen to power. Right. They'll be appointed to the kingdoms for a brief period to reign with the beast. And again, the beast, so we've got a, 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 a triumphant of uh, the devil, the antichrist, and the false prophet. And, and uh, there's a brief period where the kingdoms of the earth are, are churning, um, trying to get in the right position to be beneficial or to be benefited by the, uh, the devil and the, and the beast and the antichrist. And for a while, false religion is just flying along with them. But um, false, even false religions get, a, right. get turned back here. And they will agree to give their power and authority to the beast, to devil, and to the false prophet. Mm -hmm. Together, they will go to war against the lamb. <laughs> so, you know, people cannot fight against people, but fighting against God Almighty is just ludicrous. What, a, what an absolute arrogance mm -hmm. that you think that with your sword, spear, tanks, and, and fighter planes that you can take on the creator of the universe. He is, he is God Almighty to do or not. Just even thinking about how, how insane that is. And yeah. then you think, okay, well, maybe they think by taking on God's people, God's army, they'll defeat God. But that's not what, but their inner heart is, we're going to go to war with God. We don't like him. Uh, we've hardened our heart against him, and we are going to go to war. And they'll war against the Lamb, but the Lamb will defeat them. Because he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Ooh, sorry. Yeah. He is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. So going against God Almighty is just never a good choice. Much better, while we have the choice, to choose Jesus and to walk with him. Because he is good in the midst of our hard day. He is called, he is chosen, and faithful ones will be with him. There we go. Pretty powerful combination of words there. Yeah, it is that. Yeah, it's an awful lot of study, needless to say, if, if you want to get into it. But the uh, bottom line is, the lines are drawn, the battle lines are drawn, uh, yeah. It's the world, the kingdoms of the world, and uh, that are still under Satan's uh, influence, if not rule, against uh, the Lord. And uh, you know, it's really no contest, but uh, they're going to make one anyway. It, it, sin yeah. is, you know, sin really is, uh, in its essence, absurdity. Yeah. To to, re to be rebellious against a loving God. Uh, you know, where does that make sense uh, it, when you consider um, what the alternative is? And it's not pretty, and we'll see that coming up. Okay, so we're uh, got a lot to talk about in 15 and on, so we'll pick that up tomorrow, Lord willing. Okay. Lord, we thank you for the power of your word. We thank you that you are faithful and true and that you are the conqueror, and in you that we can be overcomers. We ask for your great grace on our lives. We ask your blessing on Palm Sunday and Easter and all the things that you have planned for us. Transform me, O oh Lord, so I can make a difference. In Christ's name, amen. Amen, yes. Thank you again, Lord, for, for the words, spirit, the anointing, all that you bring in a part to us that uh, we might have a foresight and understanding um, granted, a lot to be worked out here, um, but we appreciate, uh, in, in, in a prayer of appreciation, we thank you, thank you, thank you, and 
I'll pray for your continued leading that we might live lives that glorify you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Blessings to you all. Bye. Talk to you soon.